All right, so for this video here, we're going to be looking at going from functions or equations to tables to graphs. Okay, so one thing to remember that linear functions form a straight line. We will be dealing with that idea also on this video. And for linear, you can just think root words. Uh, the root word of linear is line. So straight line, linear, anyhow, you can go that direction with it. Okay, well, we'll just get right into it here. So completing the table. So we've done this a ton before. We'll just do a quick review on that. So in order to find the value on this table here, so we're going to fill out the table and then use the information from the table to then uh, put that information on the graph there. So for, for this spot right here, we're looking for the, the corresponding Y that goes with when the X is negative one. So we're basically just going to take this negative one for the X and we're going to replace it for X in our equation there to get the corresponding Y. So in this case here, two X minus three is going to be two times negative one and then minus three. Two times negative one is negative two minus three makes negative five and then wash, rinse, repeat. Here we go. So next blank there, we're going to change the X to a zero to find the corresponding y here. So two times zero minus three, that's gonna be zero minus three makes negative three. And keep on going here, this blank here, two times uh, the one goes in there, minus three, two times one is two, minus three to make negative one there. For this blank here, we're gonna do two times two and then minus three, so four minus three to make positive one. And for the, the last y, we're gonna look for when the x is three, so two times three and then minus three. Two times three, six minus three to make three. So now we found all the corresponding y's. Now, basically, we're gonna think of these as coordinate points. So, so negative one, so think parentheses, negative one comma negative five. Well, that's gonna be right here, negative one on the X and negative five on the Y, zero comma negative three, zero on the X and then negative three on the Y. That's actually the Y intercept there. And then one comma negative one, one for the X and negative one for the Y is gonna be there. Uh, two, one, two, one, right there. Three, three, three and three is gonna be right there. So we can also go ahead and draw a line through these. So first up, is this going to be a linear function? Well, are all the dots in a straight line? Yes, they are. So it is going to be a linear function. Check it out. There's a line. It goes through all of the, the data points that we have calculated here. Now, the reason why we're going over these is because this equation here, this table here, and this graph here all have the exact same relationship. Okay, the kind of the difference is, is that like this table, we only have, what, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five different data points there. Whereas the equation, we can find any number of them. And then if we kept this line going up and up and up or down, 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 um, we would have more solutions that we could see that, that have both this, uh, the X and the Y with this same two, times x minus three relationship. Okay, so that's the main thing we're going at is we are connecting the equation, the table, and the graph. And then we're also looking at, because we're gonna be getting into in, in the next videos, just looking at strictly linear equations or linear functions. So we are identifying whether or not that lines up with linear or not. All right, so another example here, here we're gonna put on the table and then on the graph, we're gonna put use this equation here. So y equals, x squared plus 4x plus 5. So in order to fill out the table, we're going to be using the, the equation that we have here. So this blank, this y corresponds to the negative 4 for an x. So we're going to replace the x's here and here with negative 4's. So anytime you see an x, you replace it with negative 4. So this x gets a negative 4 and this x gets a negative 4 also. Now we just do order of operations. So exponents first, we got negative four squared, negative four times itself, two negative fours being multiplied, gonna be a positive 16. And next up, multiplication. So we got four times negative four, positive times negative is negative, four times four, 16. And then we still have the plus five. So we did exponents, we did multiplication, now we do addition, subtraction. So working left to right, 16 minus 16, zero, plus five, that's gonna make a plus five. So that negative four for the X goes to five for a Y. Next up, we'll do this blank right here. That comes from X being negative three. So we're gonna replace the X's with negative threes, or you could even think of it, we're gonna switch these negative fours here with negative threes, if you wanna think of it that way as well. So negative three squared, 
positive 9, 4 times negative 3, negative 12, and then we got the plus 5 there. So this one, a little bit different. I The way I do these is, is I do all the positives first, then all the negatives, and then I subtract at the end. So if I was to do in this, I would do 9 plus 5 makes 14, and then minus 12, 14 minus 12 makes a positive 2. So if you want to go left or right, you totally can. Um, 9 minus 12, it ends up being negative, and then plus 5 pops you back up into positives. So you might make some more mental math calculation errors if you do it that way, versus grouping the, the additions and subtractions so they're a little bit easier to work with. Either way, let's move on. So next up, negative 2 goes in for the x's, or the negative 3 is there and there. We got negative 2 squared, positive 4. 4 times negative 2, minus 8, and then a plus 5 there. So if it was me, I'd go the 4 plus 5, that makes 9, and then minus 8 makes 1. Now we'll do the negative 1 for the x to find the corresponding y. Uh, negative 1 squared is a positive 1. 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4, and then plus 5, so we have a 1 and a 5 makes 6, minus 4 makes 2. Okay, so, so again, you can start moving these a little bit faster in your head. And the zero here, that's going to be the easiest one to work with. Uh, zero plus zero plus five makes five. So now that we have our T chart all filled out, now we can plot these points. So again, that's going to be a negative four on the X, comma, five if you're thinking parentheses and coordinate points. So negative four and five is going to be up here. And then negative three, two, negative three, and then to the two right there negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1, and then negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2, right there, and then 0, 5. It's going to be right on the y-axis up at 5. And then next question here, is the function linear? Again, linear is asking for, is it a line? Uh, L-I-N-E right there, root word. Uh, no, this is not a line, so it's not going to be linear. It's nonlinear. In fact, there's the shape that it makes. It's actually called a parabola or a quadratic. So this shape comes up often enough it actually has a special name parabola all right let's look at this example here so here we're doing uh, filling out the table and then putting that on the the graph so that way we can see the shape that we get from this absolute value function here so here we go so to find that blank there we're gonna put negative 1 in for X so here we go so absolute value X minus 1 plus 2 and we're replacing the X with a negative 1 so order of operations, the absolute value is a grouping symbol. So if you're thinking PEMDAS, the P is parentheses or any other grouping symbol. Absolute value is a grouping symbol. So we're doing this negative one minus one first. So that's gonna make negative two. Negative two plus two. Absolute value of negative two makes positive two plus two. That's gonna make a four there. Next up, we'll put zero in for X here, or you can think I'm gonna switch this negative one to a zero. So zero minus one makes negative one, and then we have the absolute value of that, and then plus two to an order of operations. Absolute value of negative one is positive one, so we have one plus two makes three. Uh, next up, we'll put a one in for, for the X, replace that, or the zero turns to a one. One minus one, that's zero, plus two is just gonna make two. Next up, two minus one makes one. Absolute value of one is one, so one plus two, three. And then the last one, we have a three minus one is two. Absolute value of positive two is just positive two. So we have two plus two, and that's gonna make four there. So we got our table all filled out. Now we can go ahead and put that on our graph and see what it looks like, what shape we're making there. So negative one, four, negative one, four, right there. Zero, three, zero, right on the Y axis, and then a three, one, two, and there's one and two. And then we have two, three, there's two and three three is right up there and then three four three and up to the four there so does this make a line is it a linear function no it does not make a line it looks more like a v in this case here so which lines up pretty much your absolute value graphs are going to look like v's there so just remember with any of these the equation the table and the graph, they all tell the same story just in different formats. This has number examples, this has an equation, and this kind of has a picture visual representation of it. So your linear functions, those are going to be your straight line ones. If it makes a curve, a U or a V or something like that, those are not going to be linear functions.